Hey guys, in this tutorial we're going to be covering Adobe Camera Raw and I'm going to show you just how powerful this software can be. I know a lot of people like to use Lightroom. It's basically the same interface, but for me it's definitely the way to go. And if you're still shooting in JPEG, hopefully this video will give you a very clear idea of why you should definitely switch to Raw as soon as possible. So in this initial photo you'll notice, I don't even know if you can see, but there's actually an owl here in the middle. So what I'm going to do first is increase the exposure. And very quickly, you can see how I pretty much saved the photo. Before, that would have been, you know, you just delete that one and move on. But now, I've got a very usable photo. Even if I zoom in, you can see there's, it's still very sharp. There's a little bit of noise, but it looks great overall. So now that my initial uh, edit is done and I can actually see my subject, we can start to edit this photo. The first thing I do normally with every photo now is I come to the camera calibration tab. See a little camera icon over here. If I click on that, we have camera profiles. And by default, you'll always be on Adobe Standard. This one, it's okay, but from my experience, it's kind of flat and gray compared to some of the others. You'll notice there's camera flat, landscape, neutral, portrait. What this tries to do is uh, basically replicate what these profiles look like on your camera. So if you're not aware, you can actually change your camera profile on your camera, whether it's camera standard, camera portrait, vivid. And you'll notice it just changes some of the colors and the contrast mainly. Personally, when I'm doing these, I usually either put it on portrait or standard for right now. But for this particular photo, I'm actually gonna leave it on Adobe standard. But I'd highly recommend you just play around with these for every photo just to start with and see which one looks best right out of the gate. Then go back to your basic tab, and from here we can really start to fine tune the photo. By default, raw files lack contrast, so usually want to add a little bit of that. You want to be careful your highlights aren't getting clipped, which, why don't we talk about the histogram real quick. Up here, this is our histogram. You'll notice I have a very nice histogram. All the colors are well represented. There's nothing way down here, and there's nothing way up here. But let's say you're out shooting, and you take a photo like this, see how there's this little clipping warning up here and a lot of detail is over on the right. If I click this, this red is showing me everything that got blown out, which means even if I decrease the exposure and the highlights, you'll see there's just this featureless white area, which means I've lost the detail. I can never get that back. And that's why you really want to be careful when you're out shooting that you don't overexpose the photo like this because once that data is gone, it's gone forever, with the highlights anyway. But as we saw with the shadows, let me put this back to where it was, you can see all my detail was hidden down here. But with the shadows, I can very easily recover that detail. Uh, so it's always better to underexpose the photo a little bit than overexpose. And anyway, the highlights can be used to kind of salvage some of the detail in the, the brightest areas. So again, there's before and after. Shadows are kind of the opposite, obviously. You can bring out detail in the shadows or darken them. And white, whites is kind of a bit different where if I increase this, it's increasing the brightness as well as the, the colors and everything. And I like to increase the whites quite a bit on all of my photos just to give it more of a pop. Uh, again, you'll notice I'm starting to clip some data now, so I might want to back off just a bit. And then finally, blacks. This is just going to darken the darkest colors in the photo. So down here, you'll notice it gets very dark very quickly. And at the very bottom, we've got our clarity, vibrance, and saturation. Clarity is going to make your photo look really ugly, regardless of what you do. Some people kind of like these effects. I don't personally. Uh, I use normally saturation. And again, when you shoot in RAW, your files are going to lack contrast and saturation by default unless you come over here and change the profile to something more colorful. So normally I'll increase the saturation anywhere from 10 to 20. And finally we have white balance. White balance is crucial because let's say for example I had my camera set to tungsten white balance and my photo looked like this when I imported it. Again if I was shooting in JPEG the photo is pretty much ruined and even if I did my best fixing the colors, it still wouldn't look great. But when we shoot in RAW, the white balance 
is never permanent until we open the image in Photoshop or save it. So I have complete control up until that point. And one of the easiest ways to fix a weird white balance is you can try just going to auto. That usually does a decent job, but you can see now it's too blue and too purple. Uh, so I don't really rely on auto at all. What I do use sometimes is the white balance tool up here on the right, or the left rather, the eyedropper. And what you want to do when you have that selected is find a neutral gray or a white area and just click on there and it instantly should fix your uh, white balance. And then from there you can come and mess around with the sliders, really fine tune it based on your eye. Uh, but that usually does a good job. All right, so my colors are looking good. My image overall is looking pretty good. The next thing I would do is come to my lens correction tab right here in the middle. And you'll see we have two checkboxes, remove chromatic aberration and enable profile corrections. Normally I check both of these and move on, but you'll notice in this case, it made the corners too bright and now it's distracting from the, the owl. So what I can do is come down here and I can actually drag the vignette down so it's not as noticeable. And now the vignette's back. And I can also, if I kind of like the distortion in the lens, I can turn this off. Um, basically, I have complete control over that. And you'll notice it automatically picked out the lens I was using. Almost all the time, it will find the lens. As you can see, there's a, a bunch of different options here. So it's very good about that. Um, going back to the chromatic aberration, uh, this photo, you'll see it very clearly. If I zoom in, see how there's this red fringing there? That's chromatic aberration. Again, all you have to do is click this checkbox and it's gone. Very simple. But let's say for some reason it doesn't fix it and you're left with these weird colors on the between white and black, these contrasty areas. If you go to manual, you can actually, there's a purple amount and a green amount. You can drag these over to the right and you can also expand these sliders to cover more colors. And now you can see it's disappearing there. And I'll increase it down here. And now that both of those are gone. You want to be careful though, if you go too far, I don't even know if you'll be able to see it in the video, but you'll start to get weird gray halos around things. So you never really want to go above four or five at the most for both of these values. And frankly, again, 95% of the time, the automatic checkbox does the job fine, so that's all I would do. Now that's really pretty much all I ever do in Adobe Camera Raw, but there are a bunch of other tools, so let's look at those next. Um, first, we'll look at the Detail tab, Little Pyramids. We've got Sharpening and Noise Reduction, both very powerful tools. So if I zoom in again, see how the eye is kind of pixelated and grainy? What I can do is come down in the noise reduction. I see a luminance slider. If I just drag that up, see how some of that grain's gone now. It looks a lot better. The problem is I'm losing detail in this fine feather and uh, uh, detail here. So you want to be careful that you don't overdo it because you're going to lose detail and it's not going to look as great. Personally, I usually don't go above 30. Once you get above that, it starts to get very, almost looks like a painting. If you go too far, it just looks kind of ridiculous. But this is by far one of the best ways to reduce noise in your photos, so give that a try. There's also detail and contrast. I personally don't mess with those at all, but you have color. So let me come down here, and if I turn the color tab all the way down, see how there's this ugly rainbow grainy effect? That's the color noise, and by default, Adobe Camera is always at 25, which does a pretty good job of removing it. But if you find that you still have some, you can increase it. Or a lot of people actually like to decrease it so they don't lose as much color. But this is one I usually never touch anyway. It does a good job as is. There's also sharpening. Now, I would highly recommend you do not do this sharpening method because it looks awful. See how grainy it gets? It just looks disgusting. Um, your best bet is to do your, sh your sharpening at the very end of your editing in Photoshop, right before you save it as a JPEG. If you do it here, you're not going to get the results you want. Uh, with that being said, 
there's this masking slider down here. If you hold down the Alt key and drag this, see how it starts off all white? That means every single pixel is going to get sharpened, which is why it looks so ugly. But again, if you hold down the Alt key and drag this, see now how the white's only on the owl? So if I sharpen this again, it should only affect more or less certain areas in the owl. So it looks better, but I still wouldn't even bother sharpening in here. Again, that's better left for the end of your workflow. You also have HSL. This stands for Hue, Saturation, Luminance. This is a great way to selectively increase or decrease the saturation on different color channels. For example, if I didn't like the yellow as much, I can bring that down or even make it more vibrant. Same with pretty much any color channel. Um, this is a great way. Let's say you didn't want to increase the overall saturation. You can just do it per channel and get the effects that you want. And there's also a hue tab. So if the yellows look a little bit off or the greens, you can always come in here and adjust it. But frankly, I'd rather do this in Photoshop, but at least it's here for you. Finally, we have luminance. Luminance is one I don't really bother with because it's just going to make the photo uh, look kind of weird. For example, see how ugly that looks if you start messing with things. So I really don't mess with luminance at all. With that being said, it does work well with blown out skies. So if I bring down the brightness, again, that's what luminance stands for is brightness, basically. In this case, I can retain some of that detail in the sky. And that's really the only time I ever use these sliders here. And you can see it's already starting to get a weird outline going. So you got to be careful. There's also split toning. This is, again, one I don't use very often, but you can have some cool effects with it. First thing you want to do, you'll notice there's highlights and shadows. So increase the saturation and then just kind of find a spot where the colors look good to your eye. Maybe somewhere over here. And then just drag the saturation around until you get it kind of where you like it. Same thing with shadows. Now this could be a great way to also remove any kind of weird color cast that might be present. You'll notice if I really zoom in, it looks more or less gray, but I almost feel like there's a bit of a red tinge. So I can add a little bit of blue to negate that. And that's pretty much how I use split toning on my nature photos. Finally, we have the effects tab. There's not much here. There is dehaze, but I don't think it looks very good at all. So I don't bother with this either. And that, those are the main tools that I would use in Adobe Camera Raw. There's a few more though. If we look up here in our top toolbar, we've got the white balance tool we talked about, color sample tool, I don't bother with that one, targeted adjustment, and, uh, crop, do that in Photoshop, straighten tool again, Photoshop, transform tool though, this is great if you're doing any kind of architecture or um, real estate photography, this is a great way to fix the lines in your photos so it doesn't look like everything's slanting over. Normally all I do is just hit auto and it usually does a fairly good job of aligning these uh, vertical and horizontal lines. You can see it's not perfect, but it's a hell of a lot better than that. And once I have it pretty close, I can bring this into Photoshop and again, do those final edits using the adaptive wide angle tool. We also have the spot removal. This is great if you have little specks of dust in the sky, you can just click and it'll remove them. But again, that's the one I would wait for Photoshop to do. It's much easier. We also have the adjustment brush. Let me go back to this photo here. The adjustment brush, you'll see there's all these different settings I can adjust now. And if I just hit the plus or minus, it usually resets everything. And for example, if I want to make the ocean a bit cooler, add some contrast, some saturation, now I can just paint in that and you can you know set these to whatever you want obviously depending on your photo and what you're looking for um, but it's kind of hard to do really selective edits using this tool you can change the size of the brush down here um, mainly I would just use this to fix certain things in the sky for example 
And if you don't like what you did, just come down here and hit clear all and that will remove it. Finally, we have the graduated filter. Let me reset this first of all. So the graduated filter is great if you're doing any kind of work like this where you've got a very bright sky. So let me bring down the exposure a little bit, bring down the highlights, just some very quick edits. And now if I just click and drag, you'll see it's almost like adding a graduated ND filter in front of your camera. And this is a great way to do that effect. That's really all there is to Adobe Camera Raw. You can see you have a lot of control over your photos now. And what you could do is, let's say you know you're done editing this photo, come over here, hit Save Image, make sure you're saving as a JPEG, select your folder, and then you're ready to go. You can upload to Facebook or whatever. But every time I do a photo, I'll hit Open Image, and that'll bring it into Photoshop. And now this is really where I can fine tune my photo. I can do some selective color, uh, color lookup tables, curves adjustments, sharpen the image. That's for a whole nother tutorial, but once you've done your edits in here, hit file, save as, make sure you're saving as a JPEG, and there you go. And that's the best way to do it. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment, but hopefully we covered pretty much everything you need to know about shooting in RAW and editing your photos in Adobe Camera Raw. Thanks for watching.